What is this? Finally got my package for Amazon and uh uh oh. This is my review of the base model version of the MacBook Air M1. Trabtendo. What's going on guys, DJ Av here. And again, this is first impressions in one of many videos where I'm gonna tackle some of the things that make the MacBook Air M1 very good. So I wanna talk about my unboxing experience because that was one of the things that I enjoyed about the iPad Pro 11 unboxing uh, that I did in review too as well so it comes in a pretty nice box as we all know apple really cares about presentation as you can see that with the aluminum body on this macbook air i chose the space gray version because i don't know i'm just pretty plain jane when it comes to my tech but this body <laughs> the thinness of it wow i'm quite impressed like <laughs> man that's one of the things i really like about it is this compactness uh, the box in itself comes with silicone on it and this is one of the things that i really enjoy about unboxing is uh, getting rid of the plastic and then opening up the nice box lifting it up and then you get the macbook air m1 wrapped in some more silicone and it's wrapped in a manner in which you will enjoy unraveling it and trying not to tear it open in the wrong ways just in case you want to sell it or something like that down the line because we all know <laughs> that apple is very notorious for dropping in outdoing themselves uh, with another model and I will talk about how I feel about that in the later part of the video because I do have some pros and cons for this is not all good so first impressions I think that the MacBook Air looks pretty nice in person now that I got it and this is the M1 version obviously with Apple's new silicon so we're really trying to figure out how it will be like for music producers but I know that a lot of people will want to see this in person here and I'm also recording this video right here this footage that you see is from the iPad Pro 11 2018 so yeah one of the main things I have a little gripe with is this workflow coming from Windows or whatnot uh, the touchpad feels good but I'm getting used to clicking anywhere and opposed to just clicking in these two spaces right here so yeah that's one thing I had to get used to and just navigating to notes here so the keys feel pretty decent even though I'm typing gibberish I will say the display looks okay I'm gonna open up a picture and take a look at it so I'm looking at a picture right now I'm we'll see how much I can do here uh, yeah it looks okay you know as I look at this picture it looks all right yeah it probably won't look that amazing from where you're standing, but it looks pretty crisp. I mean, I could deal with it, you know, as everything syncs up from iCloud. But I know what you guys are waiting for, and that is the apps. Let's go play with some apps and test some stuff out. All right, so let's talk about a few things. The first thing I want to talk about is obviously the MacBook Air M1 in live in action using OBS Studio. So this is how I'm screen recording. I'm also using my iPhone 12 Pro Max as my webcam. It is tethered to my computer, but I'm using a software called Epoch Cam. So I have a link in the description box. And overall, shooting at 1080p, 30 frames per second, if not 29.97. And it looks pretty decent, to be honest. I mean, there's no shallow depth of field like it would be if I was to use something like my Canon M50, which I can't tether it to the computer right now because of the webcam utility not working on Big Sur, which is one of the bigger issues right now is that a lot of software is incompatible with the M1 chip right now until companies do something about it. So the first test that I'm running will be in Ableton Live 10, which is not optimized for Big Sur, or the M1 processor that's inside of the MacBook Air. So the project is loaded and now I wanna show you a couple of things here. And the main thing is to go to the top right of the screen and see the CPU usage wise idle. Uh, I do have my Ableton push right here, ready to go. And I'm gonna play the track. So I know a lot of you guys are wondering what's going on and what is going on right now is this right here. So it is playing 
all of these tracks in a C major. And so I have different plugins. So let's go ahead and do that. I have Analog Lab V, which is a very CPU intensive plugin. I also have Clavinet Open, which is another CPU intensive plugin. And we're at 17% here. Go ahead and uh, continue on. We have the CS80 plugin. And let's drag that down. Let's go ahead and open up the DX7 plugin, which is a part of the Acheria Collection 8 or Acheria Collection V8. OB XA. It's playing as well. And then we have the CZB. And that is playing as well. And so that's about five different plugins here. So why five different plugins versus opening up the same plugin over like 20 times or something like that? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, when you open up multiple instances of the same plugin, it actually allocates that particular plugin one time in the virtual memory as the same plugin, no matter how many different presets you open or whatnot. That's not impressive. And that will kind of kill the whole point of the CPU test that it just passed. Now I'm gonna play it again. Let's turn up the volume. And now you can see over here at the top right of the screen here that it is at 16%. Uh, the CPU usage in OBS, which is my screen recording software that I chose to roll with and it's pretty common amongst everybody that does YouTube videos and instruction videos. Yeah, you can see that it is pretty good. It's handling it with no problem. And remember, again, Ableton Live 10 is not optimized for the M1 chip or Big Sur. So now I'm getting ready to open up Logic Pro X, which is optimized for the M1 chip. So we have Logic Pro X open now and it's right in front of us. And it's one of the things that I wanted to experience myself on a MacBook because I love Logic Pro when it used to be on the PC eons ago, it seems like. <laughs> I'm not experiencing any digital clipping on my end or anything like that. And from my test, I didn't hear any digital clipping uh, after the recording or when I did a live stream. And I usually live stream, and I, again, I recommend 720p 60 frames per second for a live stream. I know that's not what everybody wants. They want to do 1080p 60 frames per second. Uh, but the M1 chip, as far as the MacBook Air 2020, the base, version of it yeah i mean eight gigs of ram and so forth yeah it's not going to be able to handle it the way that you want of course you know that has to do with the fans that are not in the air by the way so it has a different kind of a cooling system here so yeah i'm impressed with that so far audio quality is good so let's pull up another track so i have another track here and what i'm going to do is just hit play and this is more or less something that i would do not buckling right now the cpu is at 25.5 percent on obs but logic is running nice and smooth while i'm local recording and it's nothing short of amazing here and the reason why i say that is because i have a couple of plugins uh that i can load up here and they're all here uh, this one is exclusive to macbook and this is the awesome uh solo and this plugin is pretty cool and we'll talk more about that in a separate video 
Uh, I got a couple of quick set, uh, what, what you call, I guess, quick sampler uh, in Logic here. And I also have like a grand piano or of some sorts here that I can't open because I don't know this, play, this uh, software like that yet. So last but not least, let's move on to FL Studio and see if it's able to do something uh, similar in terms of its performance. As you would presume, FL Studio has the most problems running. Now let's go on. Clone here. You notice the CPU at the top part of the screen over here. Flex is a very CPU intensive plugin. I'm going to pick out some random presets uh, and paint them up. You know, this test won't be that impressive to first hand. For those who don't know, this is very impressive for a few reasons. I can only open up maybe one instance of Flex on my Lenovo Y540 Intel processor i7 9th generation or 9750H uh, with 16 gigs of RAM, uh, and, it, and it will start to it will start to crackle or whatnot. You know those things that you have to deal with when you have a lot of buffer. And you have to adjust the buffer and stuff like that. And, and this thing is passing <laughs> with true. It's passing. It's like passing a lot of tests. And I'm very impressed. So tell me how you feel about this impressions and review video. I will talk about and compare it to my Lenovo Wi-Fi 40. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to do that. And there are other videos of things that I'm going to talk about, and I will talk about the M1 processor too as well in deeper detail because I don't think people understand that this is not the same laptop as the Intel processors. To be honest, I feel bad for the people that invested in the MacBook Pro uh, 16 inch uh, fully kitted out, I mean with the i9 Intel processor because boy, this should not be able to hang with it. The other thing that I like about this and some of the things as far as cons, well, I don't necessarily consider it a con for Apple, but I think a lot of third party companies need to get on their dookie and make sure that their software works. I mean, Waves is a multi-million dollar company and their plugins don't necessarily work very well. My overall experience with the first party software has been phenomenal. I mean, Logic Pro X, Final Cut Pro X, those have really held it down. I'm still getting used to both of their workflow. I mean, it's a little different from what I'm used to. It's kind of a double-edged sword um, when you're messing with the M1 and Big Sur, because we all know the biggest thing that is a con with uh, Apple products is they renew the OS and then they have to deal with the third-party developers catching up. However, I don't think that's an issue on Apple's part. My overall impressions, yeah, like, <laughs> I know a lot of people want to call me an Apple fanboy because I've jumped on the wagon, but I jumped on the wagon at a really good time. You can only imagine the people that bought the, the i9 processor maxed out with 64 gigs of RAM and the biggest solid state hard drive, and they spent at least 6K, and I've only spent $1,000, and this does outperform their laptop. And I will show more proof of that uh, with my laptop over here, which is a Windows-based laptop, a Lenovo Y540, because I will do a comparison video on that. And I want that to be a fully focused video so you guys don't miss the picture there. But the biggest thing is the software isn't even optimized yet. My only con is it's hard for me to recommend this laptop for the simple fact that the display is like a 13.3 display. And I have issues, at least me being old, 
uh, being able to see stuff like up close, like you'll see me focus in very hard. I do have a secondary screen and that helps a lot, but yeah, it's a small screen. Also, you can only run one display, not to mention that you only get two Thunderbolt 3s on this and on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, you get more uh, IO. So that is one of the things that I want to bring out as far as the cons, but that doesn't really affect the overall performance and how I feel about it altogether. Uh, do I recommend getting this? Well, if you're shopping for one of these and you really want to get a new MacBook that is on par with a lot of the Windows laptops that not better, yeah. But if you are willing to wait and see what's going to happen in September uh, with the M1X laptops like the MacBook Pro 14 inch, which will have, I believe, four Thunderbolt 3s and the SD card slot coming. I'm not sure about that. And they're getting rid of that little touch pad thingy on the top, which again, I, I almost forgot to tell you the touch pad, it feels good. It just doesn't feel very natural for me walking from Windows all the way up to a MacBook Pro right now. So that is one of the biggest things that I would say is something I would have to get used to. Do I, do I, do I give this, give this, give the stamp, the stamp, uh, 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 approve, uh, approve, uh, approve. Well, I would say 90% yes, indeed.